Hey everybody, welcome to Urban Rush. It is Wednesday, June 11th, 2008. We have a great show coming up for you today. I'm Fiona Forbes. And I'm Michael Eckford. And you sound sad about that. Well, no, I'm very happy about that, actually. Oh, my sometimes, sometimes my, I'm sad about Your what? hair's in your eyes. <laughs> Fiona's been making fun of me all day because now that my hair's long, <laughs> I have like, this habit of flicking He's walking it. down the hallway and he's doing this. I'm like, um... You don't have hair to get in your eyes? It gets in my forehead. <laughs> my hair gets in my forehead. No, Mike, it's coming out of your forehead. <laughs> right. Anyway. It's coming out of my forehead much what's faster. What's going on? I've been listening to a lot of trash talking this morning. Fiona and I have a little wager this on the NBA final house. right now. This is my house. Why? Because the Lakers are going to kick the Celtics' butts. Why? Did I trash talk when Why? it was 2 nothing for you the You always trash the talk me all the time. And this is how this whole thing you. started. Because you <laughs> thought <laughs> Pittsburgh was going to win the Stanley Cup. We put money on it. Who won the Stanley Cup? Detroit. And then Mike Barely. said, Sex in the City is going to suck. Boo, it could never beat Indiana Jones in the box office. So he doubled down on the bet. And who won at the box office? Sex in the City. Kobe and the gang last night. Who kicked their butts? Oh, yeah, the Lakers Sorry, did. And what's the score in the series? Two to one. And what, my friend, <sighs> are the Lakers good at? When they are at the Sucking. Staples Center, Sucking. winning, All winning. Right. They won last night, but and they, Mike, in the NBA, you have to win on your home court. There's such a huge advantage. And how many this. games do they have on their home court? How many games are in the series? Are you passing gas? Seven. No, <laughs> not yet. Anyway, I'm just saying. The Celtics are going to take one game I'm in gonna LA. I'm going to be you, how you are when I lose a bet. Win. Boo! There you is a... suck! <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to bet on? There's next? some big news in the hockey world today locally. Trevor Linden in Vancouver, Captain Canuck, a man who has come to define uh, the Vancouver Canucks Love over the last in that 20 picture, years. By the way. We heart you, Trevor. He's retiring today. We do indeed heart you, Trevor Linden. Uh, one of our uh, crew members, Ken has the rookie card Trevor Linden, who looks surprisingly like John Shorthouse, actually, the Canucks play-by-play -play guy. Doesn't he a little bit? Who's John Shorthouse? He looks a little bit like John Shorthouse. You mean Johnny Just a Shorthouse touch. who calls the games? Yeah, but he looks a bit, look at how young he was in this. But anyway, I think probably uh, uh, he and Stan Smeal, obviously the two greatest uh, captains in Canucks and history. And what is the greatest sports question I've ever asked? What's the deal, Stan Smeal? <laughs> He looked at me like you I know was it's a good question. And dumb. You know it's a good question if you can rhyme. <laughs> then it's going to be good. But you stuff. know what? I was kind of hoping uh, Lyndon would announce that he was going to go for twenty and not retire. I was hoping that it would have been nice. Hope clause that I he was going to play one more year. It would have been nice, but uh, I think he went out just uh, in the best way possible. He went out just as a great player, and uh, we look forward to having so him on well the show respected. at some point to talk about it. Okay, so you've yesterday, been an airhead lately. A lot. Totally. So unlike me. Dude. Well, yesterday, um, our good friend Buzz Bishop, who you can listen to afternoons on 95 Crave, he was on the show last week talking about some tech gadgets. And he was so nice. He said, I really want to drop off this wine for you. It's got a great story, blah, blah, blah. He was so like, excited thanks, about it. Buzz. And I thought, thanks, Buzz. And then he came by yesterday and he said, here's the Greg Norman. And he said, I go, Greg Norman from Australia. Wow, I've never really heard of Greg Norman. Who's Greg Norman? And Who's I got Greg the look, Who's the Greg glare. Norman? Both you and Buzz looked at me like, Do you know oh, his... could you not know who that is? Do you is? know anything about him now? He's... He looks like Crocodile and Dundee. That's what I know about him. Yes! See what I'm saying? He is the great white shark. Or Hulk shark. Hogan before he went One crazy. One of the, well, maybe Hulk Hogan? Before he went crazy. <laughs> before he went crazy. No, I think that was before you went crazy. Greg Norman, great white shark. Uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, golf players in the 80s and 90s. He was at the top of the game. Uh, had one of the greatest sort of crumbles of all time at the Masters one year as well. But he's into the wine. He is very into the wine. He's <laughs> actually one of, uh, one of the best boutique wine producers. He has some great estates in Australia and in California And the as well. local connection that Buzz was all to excited all about. Is he's in Vancouver. I haven't heard a lot about this, uh, but this is a big event. He's part of the Skins game uh, that's happening in Vernon on Monday Do and Tuesday. Do they wear shirts? No, they really? don't wear shirts. And you want to see Greg Norman without a shirt on. Hello. But anyway, no, can we see the picture again? Just Mike, so your hair's in your eyes. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Uh, so he's part of the Skins game. Mike Weir's part of this as well. Uh, it's happening Monday, Tuesday, Predator Ridge in Vernon. You can go check it out and drink some of his wine. It's delicious wine. I haven't tried it yet, but I hear it's great. You it's very good. Stores. So 
that is one aspect of the airheadedness, not knowing who Greg Norman was. The other aspect we've explained earlier in the week, Fiona looked at me and called me Stanley, and she wasn't joking. In she thought that was people. I she thought, thought that, that was, was your name. actually my name for a minute. So I'm having a bit of an identity crisis this week. So this morning, ride my bike to work, and I've got my I love bike. The way you do that. Ride my bike to work, <laughs> and I've got my helmet on, and I walk into the building. We have a pass card system uh, to get upstairs, right? So you put your card there, and then you press the floor you're going to. And I go in the elevator, I'm the first guy there, and then these other two ladies follow in, and I've already pressed the floor I want. And the lady walks in the elevator and she goes, oh, the floor I already want has been pressed by this young lady. <laughs> she looked at me. Oh, Mike. She I mean, Michelle. Me. I mean, Stanley. She looked at me and she had like a few seconds where she was like, were you wearing this get-up, or did you have oh. on a frilly frock for spring? Oh, I had my spandex cycling short. No, I didn't. Even I just, worse that you get no, mistaken for a lady no, in kidding. spandex shorts. No, I'm kidding. I, I had uh, I had just shorts on, and and and. Well, young lady, we have a great show. And then she up for said, and then she said, "Oh, sorry. Sometimes I can't tell where the couriers are boys or girls." <laughs> The couriers? Yeah. She, really? Yeah. She, she thought, thought you were a courier? Yeah, but I thought that was kind of cool because couriers got a little street Renegade. Cred, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm a bit of a rebel. Ah! Stanley's the hottest girl in the elevator. Anyway, a little painful this morning. Continues a trend that I hope ends as oh, of today. Oh, Stanley. Well, we have a great show today.